Welcome to a Toyota Celica video, this 1991 Toyota Celica GT and in this video I'm going to be doing a few jobs. So I bought myself a few parts for the Celica. Um, I was originally just going to change the uh, change the pre fuel pressure regulator, and I've got the uh, washer jets to change because they these generic ones I bought they don't they don't fit all the they look they look horrible. So I think these these should fit a bit better, and also. I'm going to change the gasket between the two halves of the inlet manifold. Just open the bonnet and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Because this inlet manifold is in two parts on this car. One, you know, the, one part of it's painted so you can tell it. Just get this bonnet, bonnet prop up. There we go. That's the point it we made. But it's that gasket. I thought if there's a leak there, then it might not be running right. And then when I was looking on eBay, picked up a fuel rail with injectors off an, off an own working car I think it might have a fuel pressure regulator with it it only cost me 30 quid delivered I thought I'm having some of that so I'm going to be doing an injector replacement as well at some point so I think it's time to crack on with first job yeah, sorry about the, uh, the angle you know, the sunlight's not the best so I'm just going to pull these, these jets off because uh, like I said, when I fit them, they didn't fit, they didn't fit right. They want, they're just generic ones. And I did, did, did see some actual original Toyota ones on eBay for about 30 quid. I thought I'm not paying 30 quid for a pair of washer jets. And like, uh, like I said earlier, it's probably no longer available. A lot, lot of parts have been discontinued by Toyota. So I'll just get the, get the tape off this one. And I can just put, I'll just pull it off there. That's easier. So I've got my new jets off it up. Not perfect, but it should be able to secure it better. Get a, get a nut onto it from behind. Maybe me. Forgot to check what size the nut is. It's fourteen millimeters. So I'll just just get this get this secured in in somewhere like the right place. Fit, it's not deep enough. But I did bring a, a ratchet sp spanner with me. So I'm just going to use the, uh, the open ended side of it. But again, these 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 are also a genetic, but as you can tell, 
that fits a lot better. So all that remains is put the hose on. I need to reroute re these. Root the uh, washing hose. I'll do that later. And it's rinse and repeat with the other with the other jet. So that's the uh, washing jet. Washing jet's all buttoned up, and I did find an extra uh, piece of hardware to to hold this insulation on. So that's that out of the way. Time to move on to the big job. So if you've seen the, any of the previous videos, this thing is just no power when setting off. And I did post on the Salika Club forum many moons ago. And people were saying it, it was the injector, so that's why I, I bit the bullet and got, got the injectors and I'm gonna be changing changing this uh, gasket for the two halves of the manifold so I need to get this manifold off and I can turn into the injectors so I've got, got, I've got myself hopefully a suitable selection of tools and then can start uh, disconnecting everything I'm going to start by disconnecting the throttle cable so off that comes off the bracket Couple of ten mils, and so as not to lose me, my screws. Let's put them in there. And that's the cable out of the way. Now I've got a bit more access to the to the manifold. I realise I'm going to need to uh, disconnect. There's a hose here. For the, I think that's a vacuum hose for the inlet manifold. I'm going to need some pliers to disconnect that hose, so I'll come back to you. So, got, got some suitable pliers. Just connect this, this hose. I think it's a vacuum hose. It runs from the, I think it runs from the brake servo. So, that's, that's that out of the way. Move it under under that the uh, the bar can't remember what it's called now this uh, this 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 bar forgotten what it's called never mind keep going so I need to separate the throttle body. So okay, there's a connector there. It's got to come off. Most of the disconnect. Than ten. Banjo bolt goes into the manifold. He's disconnected. Disconnecting. There's also a sensor on here. I'm not sure what that sensor is. But I think we we'll need more tools. Eh? I'm not sure if I'm getting with with three eighths ratchet. I'm about to get with. The other ratchet. I'm looking for the 
looking for my 10 mil socket, it was on me in me a small impact. No, can't get in there. So need to get more tools. I'm back with me quarter inch drive ratchet. There's a there's a sensor on here. No, I can't I can't get in I need to un unplug the sensor. There we go. Is that sensor unplugged? I should be able to leave it off the manifold. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the throttle body. Let's have a look. Is that a 12 or a 13? I'm planning to leave, leave the throttle body where it is and just disconnect it. Here it's no, not the deep one. Let's have a look. 13. No, can't get in with the socket. I'm going to try, try a spanner. That's for certain. So it must be a 12. So a, lot, a lot of these are 10, 12, 13, and 14. So I should be able to. Uh Separated from the uh, from the throttle body. Let's see if there's anything else that needs to be disconnected. This end. Yeah. So just pull these two vacuum hoses out. And then just got all the bolts around here. What size are them? Uh, they're all twelves. Should be able to buzz them off with the impact. If I had a suitable size, let's have a look. Can't get in, so I need it. I need a, the three eighths a deep twelve mil socket. So I'll be right back. Right back with the suitable, suitable size socket. So we've got these. Short work of it all. Now these two, they're, thir they're thirteen mil. So change to the thirteen mil. To 
buzz that off. Right, that one don't want to play ball. Not because it's a 12. Yep, it's a 12. Must, look, must ball be 12s. And I've got one that's... So this part of the inlet manifold should just lift off. Is there anything else that's disconnected? I need to disconnect that. And I probably need to take this bracket off here, which is, which is part of the uh, front cable. Removing them, top one should be enough to to free it off. Let's have a look at them. Let's get free these others off as well. <sighs> no, I can't get with impact, so I'm not going to try. So shorter ones at the bottom. So let's find 12 mil on the three eighths. No, well, three eighths is too big, so I'm going to go with half inch. Not half inch, quarter. Ten. No, it's gonna be it's gonna be span the time. Yeah, it's That's that bracket liberated. And I better put these bolts sort of rough where they go on this bracket and they don't get lost. And this, if I'm quite right, this should just lift off. There we go. And lo and behold, is there a gasket? Yeah, there is a gasket. Yep. But we've got a new gasket, so that should give me room to get to the injectors. I should need to uh, remove the uh, the rest of the manifold. That should give me room for for the injectors. So what I'll do is I'll get some blue blue paper towels, stuff those those inlet ports, so no crap gets in, and I'll get back to you. So I've got the uh, inlet ports blocked, and uh, that gives me plenty of access. To the uh, injector, to the injectors. Let's have a look. Looks like is it ten or a twelve? We'll just try the three eighths. The plastic cover. No, it's not. It's not a twelve. So must be ten. this cover and you can tell somebody's been in here before 
so this, is, this must be why part why in for injection let's see what can I get to get to the fuel rail I mean I may need to take the, right, the manifold off but oh, access is looking a bit difficult I can see I can see the fuel rail but it looks like a, a wiring for the injectors And get to the let's see we need to take some more of this manifold off it's gonna be awkward but I can move this wire in loam yep I can see Some, somebody's definitely been here before me. So I just need to. Uh, yes, I can see that fuel rail. And that should, there should be enough room for me to disconnect the injectors. So I've got one out. Got number, get to numbers two and three. This is not looking good. Yeah, somebody's definitely been here before me. The connector is broken. So I think the uh, small screwdriver might be might be an idea. So I'm going to liberate one. Push the tab. Just about pushing the tab back. Disturb the fuel rail. Yeah, I could just just try try and just changing the injectors. That'd be that'd be an easier way. Let's see if I can. I can just move some of this wiring loom. Been hacked out. Um, you now we have um, broken connectors. So it might be an idea just to try and just pull out the, the injectors. Proving to be a little bit difficult. Right, I'll take you a bit closer in, you can see what I mean. Uh, so, oh, knocking the light, I managed to liberate injector number two, and that plugs in tag. But if you look at number number one down there, that's I think that's in tag. But number three, shine the light. If you see three, that's that's been butchered, and number four is the same. Now, I've just realised that. Uh, this fuel rail is going to have to come off. Yep, it's going to have to come off. 
and there's not much room to work with, so it's just a matter of uh, undoing those bolts. I don't know how many there are, there's at least three. Yeah, there's, there's like just three. So it is a replacement fuel rail with hopefully working injectors. And yeah, it's just three three bolts, disconnect the pipe, which is down here somewhere. Let's have a look here. Yep. Yeah, there, there it is, that's the that's uh, pipe disconnected from the manifold, so just a matter of uh, undoing. Yeah, no, I think there's not, not a lot of them to return. That seems to be missing from here, but we'll, we should be able to get that out. I've got the three bolts out with a 12 mil, and now it's just a matter of separating the fuel rail. Getting the fuel rail out, I don't know to do that with. Might be a bit difficult. Just not a lot of room in here. And I've pulled the injectors off the fuel rail. There's there's a fuel rail, but this this one's slightly different. It shouldn't shouldn't make that much. It shouldn't matter that much. I'm just not sure how this comes off of it. I'm just not sure. I will proceed from here. So I'll just carry on, see if I can get it out, leave the injectors in situ or, or something. There's just not a lot of room to play with. With the fuel line, the fuel line, it's like the main feed for the injectors. Might be impossible to get the fuel rail out without taking the manifold off. Which would be a whole lot of fun. You know, taking this manifold off in. I'm struggling, so I think I'll need to consult the aims. So I'm going to get all the, uh, the plugs out for the, the injector harnesses, and now two of them tabs have broken, so it was just a matter of getting pliers and I'm just pulling them off. I don't know if that's going to make any difference, but getting this uh, getting this out is proven to be a bit difficult because <laughs> this fuel loss for the for the regulator. You know, I need to take it off, and and the clip where you compress it is at the back, which is a little bit inaccessible. And I had to remove the strut brace. That's what it's called. I forgot what it was called. I can't remember it. But before, so yeah, strut brace is off. So I just better put these uh, strut top nuts back in and they don't get lost. Just put them in loose, the car's not moving anywhere, so no danger of suspension falling out. Just keeping these safe. Better put the two back in, two bolts into the bulkhead again so I don't. So I don't lose anything, but once I've got a pipe off that, the regular the pressure fuel pressure regulator, I should be able to get the uh, the fuel rail out. 
and disconnecting this harness is just definitely making life a little bit easier. So I just have to see what I can do. Just get that pipe off and then I should be able to get the fuel rail out. So I've ended up having to take the camshaft cover off or whatever you want to call it, a valve cover valve of. And it looks like it should be room enough to get this fuel rail out. Oh, there we go. Easy as that. That was, that was dead simple. Easy once you know how. And this bit injector harness is in the way, but I'm getting this pretty, pretty much out there. Just twist it and uh, I'm not sure to liberate it. So just move this camshaft cover and get some more light. Uh, and when the light doesn't fall, I can get these these injectors out. Now what I'm thinking of doing is just I could just swap the injectors over. So I just Yep, I think that's what my dolls. I'll swap these injectors over. It's gonna make the old job a lot easier. So I've got access to the injectors and there's probably nothing nothing else wrong, fuel rail and that oh, should be alright. So yep, swap these injectors out and then see where we go. Uh, I just well, I pulled one of them off and get get the replacements fitted and then it's just about putting it all back together. Okay, everything's all buttoned up. I've got a fully charged battery. Time for the moment of truth. <sighs> Ready to prime the fuel system if there's any fuel in it. Oh, yep, we're getting some fuel pressure. Still feel, but we're running. Uh, I can't smell any leaks. Uh, it running took a while because the uh, fuel system was empty. Um, so just leave it a while and. A bit low on fuel, it's, it's a bit stale as well, it'll be at least two year old with the fuel, so I'll probably benefit from, from some fresh fuel. So I'll just run it for a bit, see if it'll uh, see what happens when it gets up to temperature. Yeah, it's a few days later, because uh, when I fired it up, I let it run up to temperature, and it was a bit late at night, so I couldn't, I couldn't test it. Now I've put some fresh fuel in it, I've pumped the tyres up, so I'm going to take it for a quick run round block. See if it performs any better with these replacement injectors. Right, it's a bit difficult to tell on this one. It definitely feels like it's running better, but you know, still still fuel in the system, and uh, the rear brakes are, are binding because we've been packed up in the same spot for two years since. Remember the shed build when I got evicted from the garage? It's been here ever since. So. Jury's out at the moment, might run it round a bit more. Try free the brakes off, see, see if that makes any difference. Well, I've added a bit more petrol and some redex, I don't know if I said that last time or not. Um, it's the same as it was before. 
So I'm doing what I should have done before. I've ordered a set of injector seals on eBay. And when they arrive, I'll uh, have to take the injectors out again. Should be a bit quicker this time now I know what I'm doing. Put new seals in and see if that makes any difference. And it's quite a few days later and the injector seal kit's turned up. So what I'll do is I'll take these injectors out again and I'll come back to you and we'll uh, carry on with this in the shed. So I've got the injectors back out and there's no way they're ever going to run properly. I mean, look if you look at this one, this they're absolutely done. And that like says I had no intention of uh, not change, changing these these seals. I mean, new, you know, for the sake of what twenty odd quid. Yeah, it's worth it's worth doing it, even if they look all right. So I'll set, set you up somewhere, and I'll get these uh, these injector seals changed. So I'll just just take these take these seals off. I mean, this one I saw, I saw you look at that. Look at that. That's that's well and truly gone. So I'll just pull all these seals off. Give them a, a douse of brake cleaner. Just give them a good clean. So, they go clean that on outside, ready for new seals. So as you see this this seal it go that goes on first. And this is this is where it seals against against the fuel rail. Should have should have sprayed some silicone but I'll do that afterwards and then we've got our smaller O ring which goes on top of the injector like so and then we have the one where it goes into the manifold. And there we go, that's uh, that's our first one. Resealed. I'll carry on with the rest. I'm sorry for that brake cleaner in way, but that's our first one done. Ready to go back in, cleaned and ready to go back in. So I'll just carry on with other three, and then I'll come back to you when I'm ready to put them back in the car. Probably won't film that bit because you you see you might see me. I'll just show you when I'm ready to install them, and then just put it all back together and hope it works. So that's all four injectors cleaned up. New seals ready to go back on. Uh, probably give them a, a bit of a spray of silicone, up, hopefully to to help them get get themselves into place. Um, we should have no leaks when we come to start the engine. So I've got the injectors fitted with the new you know, the, the new seals. And uh, something I noticed straight away is it fired fired up literally on the button. Normally it takes quite a bit of cranking. And. <clears throat> can't see any signs of any leaks. I, I did have a leak last time, but that was due to the camshaft cover not being a, you know, screwed down properly. But if I just show you, there you go. It just fires up on the button when I turn the key. So all that remains is to give it a bit of a, a run around the blocks to see what it's like. See if I've see if injectors with a problem. And if not, back to the drawing board. Well, unfortunately, that's not the problem, but at least I've got known good working fuel injectors in it and new seals. So, whatever the problem is, it's not the injectors. So, I'm gonna end the video here. Hope you enjoyed this one. As ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.